old motorcycles are just better than newer ones. In today's video, we're gonna go over everything about this motorcycle that is better than things on my ZH2 and things on my ZZR 1400. All right, so the very first thing that is better about this motorcycle, no electronic gizmos getting in the way, nothing. This is all mechanical. So carburetors, yes, they can be really annoying, but arguably really reliable. So every once in a while, maybe 10,000 miles, 15,000 miles or so, you might have to go ahead and clean those carburetors or maybe even tune them to get the bike running as it should be. But something like that is fairly straightforward, at least on most motorcycles, it should just be a case of taking the tank off, maybe the air box, front seat, then you have access to the carburetors. Now to clean them, of course, you've got to take them off, but that's not really that difficult of a task. It, the, the hard bit is actually cleaning them and tuning them. That's the bit, for me at least, that I get most intimidated by if I was gonna do this on this motorcycle by myself. And the throttle response is gonna be pretty good, especially on a motorcycle from the 90s. It's gonna be on par with something that is fuel injected. So don't worry about throttle response, don't worry about power so much. It's still gonna be pretty good in comparison. Oh look, look at these people. They're not happy, are they? <laughs> Oh, it's because they're driving really slow, look. Oh, really slow people. Totally cable-operated throttles. When I twist this throttle back, I am opening the throttles, right? No electronics in between whatsoever. Same with the clutch as well, a cable-operated clutch. So whenever I pull on this lever, it goes all the way down to this lever here and pulls on the clutch. Now, most modern clutch systems are hydraulic these days. Like, if you have a hydraulic leak, what are you going to do? There's nothing you can do about it. Your bike is toast. Now, we are going to do a video in the near future about what you can do if your clutch goes. But when you are on a cable actuated clutch, you can jerry rig something to open up the clutch. You can do something. But with a hydraulic system, if there's a leak in it and you lose pressure, there's not a lot you can do. Arguably, these motorcycles are also much simpler. They're much simpler to work on because they're all mechanical. There's no, there's no cables going everywhere throughout the bike. Yes, there is an, a, a, an electric system, of course, to power the lights, to power the dashboard and all that stuff. But when it comes to the actual engine and the functioning of the motorcycle itself, everything is accessible with a wrench. You know, a simple socket set, you can pretty much strip this entire motorcycle down to its bare parts. I think a lot of mechanics prefer working on older bikes like these for that reason, because they are more straightforward. No ABS, of course, when you're pulling on that front brake, you're not getting any ABS on a motorcycle like this. But in my opinion, it doesn't really matter. If you are a street rider, solely a street rider, it's not really gonna impact you all that much. And the funny thing is as well, that if you are a track rider, as far as I'm aware, track riders don't like having ABS on either. So arguably, if you're gonna buy a motorcycle for a track day, get something older like this. You don't have to worry about the ABS getting in the way whatsoever. You know, and the crazy part about all this is that these bikes function exactly the same as a more modern one. Exactly the same. The power level, the power delivery is the same. The throttle response is going to be very, very similar. The amount of performance that you're getting is going to be pretty much on par, at least on the street anyway. This thing can compete on the street with any modern motorcycle, right? Just because it's got more electronic gizmos, just because it might have launch control, traction control, cruise control, you don't need any of that stuff. This motorcycle is very, very rudimentary in a lot of ways when you compare it to a modern bike, but it doesn't matter. The main thing, the most important thing, is that this motorcycle rides just like any other, and it does it really well. So, let's jump on the bike and let me demonstrate. Here we go, look, watch. It's going to start on the button. There might be a few quirks if you get an old bike, but here we go, watch. Look at that. Straight away, no worries whatsoever. Now, I can't guarantee that that's going to be the same for European bikes, if you're going to get an old European bike, I can't guarantee it's going to be the same. But for Japanese bikes of this era, 90s Japanese bikes, absolutely wicked. Absolutely wicked, man. <laughs> A lot of you know by this point already that this motorcycle, out of all the bikes that I've owned, is probably my favourite, at least right now. 
not just because it's old and because I wanted to keep going but because it's actually really good and for the amount of money that I paid for it the experience is well worth the money I paid for this motorcycle which was one and a half thousand pounds that's it for a motorcycle of this caliber Even did a little wheelie there. <laughs> what a bike, man. What a bike. It's so good. Everything works. Everything works on this bike. And that's the thing. When you've got a motorcycle that is from the 90s and it doesn't have so many electronic gizmos on it, there is less that can go wrong. Simple as that. The simpler a machine is, the more reliable it's going to be and the easier it's going to be to fix when something does go wrong. Simples, what more do you want, man? This motorcycle has 150 horsepower. Yes, it's a little bit low on horsepower compared to maybe my ZR1400 or my ZH2. It doesn't matter. It's still buckets of fun with the amount of power that it has. And of course, this is a sport bike, so the power band is going to be 8,000 RPM and up. Just awesome. But that's not to say there's no power on tap at the lower end. Of course there is. I don't know what gear I'm in. Maybe third or fourth gear, something like that. Yeah. You can feel that torque, man. You can seriously feel that torque. And the, the crazy thing about this is that I've been buying modern bikes all my riding career, and I never realized how good some of these older bikes are. And I'm actually, uh, in the near future, probably going to be buying another motorcycle of this era again. And I'm probably going to keep a motorcycle of this era in my garage for the foreseeable future. There's nothing more that you need. That's the thing, you know, they're, they're trying to innovate, they're trying to make motorcycles more attractive, but by adding electronics and things like that. But the problem is that by doing that, they're turning them into phones, into smartphones. You don't need a smart motorcycle. A dumb motorcycle will do you good. As long as you know what you're doing. No, no rider aids whatsoever. Nothing. Don't need them. All you need is a steady throttle hand and a brain. I know that uh, that's quite difficult to come by sometimes within the motorcycling community. But, <laughs> strictly speaking, that is all you need on one of these bikes. Wow, that's a pretty dumb place to stop, isn't it? Just round a corner. Oh, what, oh is it because they couldn't fit? Wow, really? <laughs> Dummies. And the crazy thing is, now I'm talking about the ZX9R, right? But this logic, this experience will apply to any of the Japanese four of this era. You look at a, a GSX R6, a, a 750. You look at a Fireblade, a 954 Fireblade, 929 Fireblade. You look at one of those old 1000cc Yamahas. Honestly, they're gonna give you such a good experience. And the crazy part about this is, if you're not looking for a sport bike, of course there are so many other offerings out there. There are 600s, there are 650s, there are 700s, there are 800s, 500s. There are all sorts of different sizes, different power levels. There is something out there for everyone. And it's all from the 1990s, early 2000s. And they're all good. They're all really good. You'd be a fool not to get involved with one of these old motorcycles. They have so much life left in them. Man! <laughs> That's 70 mile an hour, guys! <laughs> Just, oh, wicked. Just so good. So, so good. Oh, love it, guys. Absolutely love this bike. Anyway, this GoPro has, has died on me today as I've been out shooting, so I'm going to leave the video here before this one dies. Thank you ever so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. 
how do these old bikes compare to modern ones if you have ridden them? And do you still ride bikes from the 90s? I don't know why you're not. If you're not, you bloody well should be. So definitely look on Facebook Marketplace right now on Auto Trader, all those good sites to see if you can find a good one because there's lots of good ones out there. But anyway, thanks again for watching. Take care, ride safe, and we will catch you all in the next video. Have a good one.